Hey guys, what's up? So this video, I'm going to be talking about the best new programming languages to learn in 2017. So I've talked about best languages in the past, and a lot of times that's dominated by the industry uh, dominate dominators. Uh, you know, languages like C Sharp and Python and JavaScript. Uh, so this language, well, this list is going to focus on languages that are not more than 10 years old. So even though 10 years seems like a long time for programming languages, it's really not that long. We've been using C since the 70s and C++ since the 80s and Python since the 90s and Perl since the 80s. So like these languages don't, they take a long time in order to get adopted and things like that. So when I say new languages, if it's in the past 10 years, it's still considered new by uh, most standards. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the list here. So first one is, uh, number 10 is Elm. And uh, Elm is, as their description, a delightful language for reliable web apps. Generate JavaScript with great performance and convert a small part of your app to Elm and embed it in JavaScript. So essentially, Elm is uh, a purely functional language that was created by a, a Harvard PhD. And I believe it was created in 2012. And it's, it's starting to gain, gain a lot of steam. I've talked about it in the past. Um, it, it's got a pretty devoted following. And um, you know, check them out for more information. Next one is Kotlin. Um, so this works within the Java runtime, so it's interoperable with the Java Virtual Machine. Um, so it, it's also it can be used with like uh, Eclipse, which is the very popular open source uh, integrated development environment that you use to write code and debug your code uh, on a Java uh, platform. Number eight is Julia, a high-level, high-performance dynamic programming language for technical computing with syntax that is familiar to users of other technical computing. Um, so the syntax is very similar, I hear, uh, to like a Python. So I've never actually messed with Julia myself. Um, that is something that I, I do want to look into, but I've, I've been hearing a lot about Julia lately. Number seven is Hack, and it's a programming language. Uh, Reconciles the fast development cycle of a dynamically typed language with the discipline provided by static type checking uh, while adding many, many features commonly found in other modern programming languages. So when they talk about um, you know, static typing, so it's like you know, having to declare your ints and, and, uh, and things like that, things that you don't have to do actually in JavaScript or Python. Um, but uh, Hack is actually created by the guys over at, at Facebook, and Facebook is also responsible for um, the the uh, the React uh, React popular React project for client side web development, as well as uh, their React Native, so that you can write iOS and Android apps. Number six is TypeScript, and this is a uh, JavaScript uh, preprocessor type language where you're writing in. Uh, essentially a very JavaScript familiar type of syntax, but it has uh, type safety. So in JavaScript, you don't actually know sometimes what type of parameters are being passed into your functions, or just by looking at functions that takes in you know, parameter A and B. You don't know if A is, is an int or a string or whatever. Um, you know, that's all just, with TypeScript, you actually have to declare, um, well, actually it's optional, but um, the idea is that you want to declare those types, so it makes it a little bit easier to reason about your language. It was created by Microsoft, and it's been around for a few years now. I believe they created it somewhere in 2010 or 2011. Number five is Clojure. Clojure is a dynamic general purpose programming language combining the approachability and interactive development of a scripting language with an efficient and robust infrastructure for multi-threaded programming. So Clojure is a functional programming language. You hear a lot about functional languages. Uh, functional languages are getting more and more popular because of our multi-core processors that aren't built for, um, you know, the, the straight processor speed. It's the processor speeds actually being um, being di essentially divided into multi-cores so that you can exceed uh, a typical single you know, processor uh, speed. So uh, if, if if I explain that right, basically computers of the old day used to have one processor. Nowadays they have four, but you need programming languages that are capable of, of using all four of those cores at the same time. And a lot of our older languages just weren't built around that type of uh, mentality. Number four is Elixir. Um, Elixir is a dyna dynamic functional language designed for building scalable and maintainable applications. So uh, it's actually used in conjunction with the Erlang programming language, which goes back to a lot of uh, like telephony systems, like telephone systems that have been very, very reliable 
over the decades that have been written in Erlang. Uh, Elixir is a uh, language, a functional language, built uh, essentially on top of that runtime. Number three is Swift. It's a general purpose programming language built using a modern approach to safety, performance, and software design patterns. So with Apple, Apple created the Swift programming language um, to make it easier to, to write software specific to the Apple ecosystem. So, um, you know, Apple uses a lot of Objective-C and uh, some people had some complaints about Objective-C being too difficult to learn and um, Apple was looking for a more simpler type of language and that's kind of where Swift came about just a few years ago. Number two is Go and this is arguably the coolest logo I think. Um, that and Elixir for some reason jumps out at me. Uh, but the Gopher is, uh, you know, Go or Golang. Uh, it's an open source programming language that makes it easy to build simple, reliable, and efficient software. So this is considered to be like a systems level language. It's built with concurrency in mind. Um, and that said, it was, it was created by Google to replace a lot of their existing infrastructure that was written in Python and C++. And Go is a very, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a language that is definitely picking up a lot of steam and it's it's great for things like uh, web servers and any sort of concurrent based uh, programming that you may need to do. And number one is Rust. Uh, Rust is a systems programming language that runs blazingly fast, prevents seg faults and guarantees thread safety. So Rust um, is also built with concurrency in mind. Um, variables are immutable by default. Uh, meaning that they cannot be changed once they've been declared. Uh, Rust makes it so that you have to program your, 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 your application in a way that has concurrency in mind and makes it very difficult to actually step on your, your, your own feet or trip over your own feet. Um, things that you know, they have been complained about with the Golang language with concurrency with its Go routines and channels and things like that, um, they say Rust almost makes it to the point where it's, it's, it's very difficult you have to go out of your way to kind of screw yourself over with a concurrent based application. Um, Rust was created by the guys over at Mozilla, which are responsible for the Mozilla web browser, Firefox, and uh, they've been an industry leader with a lot of code and, um, and improvements that we've made along the way. Uh, so both are, are very, very reliable languages, both Go, Golang and Rust, and then uh, you can throw Swift in there as well. But I think, uh, you know, of the three languages, um, you know, the top three are, are definitely uh, industry contenders because they have major backers behind them, uh, which includes uh, Apple, Google, and Mozilla. All right, guys, so that's my list. Let me know what you think. If you guys have other suggestions or anything, feel free to leave a comment. And take care, guys. Make sure you subscribe. Bye. Hey, guys, so a lot of you ask me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12-week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day.